Hey worshipers, this is Jared, and today we're going to be talking about handbells. It's going to be awesome! <sighs> Alright, this one's a winner. We're geared up, ready to go. Alright, the first thing we need to go over is how to ring the handbells. Now there are three different types of ringing. Let's see if I can get this whiteboard up here. Uh, there is regular ringing, which is, uh, is usually marked with an R, or you won't see this at all usually. Uh, we'll call it regular. Hey, I'm sure that's probably pretty close to spelt correctly. Uh, the other ones are LV. You see this? It stands for Let Vibrate. Uh, and this just es essentially means that uh, you're going to allow the bells to vibrate um, until the music tells you something else. You know, like, uh, what, like they give you one of these, or they give you another one of these, or they uh, give you this which is ring touch. I don't know if you can read this or not, but I'm, I, hope, I hope it's getting in the shot. But this RT, ring touch, it is exactly what it sounds like. You ring it and then you touch it. Um, usually you're supposed to do it to your shoulder. A lot of people like to do it to their, to their stomachs because it's, it's a really short ring, um, especially as compared to a regular ring, uh, an LV let vibrate. Uh, this RT is going to be the shortest of the three. So this is going to be, if you're, if you're calling them, uh, you know, short, medium, long, short, medium, long. Here we go. Let's hear them. Let's see if I can get this whiteboard out of here. And I will, I will first demonstrate the regular ringing style. So I'm playing an F4 and an A4 right now. Here we go. So the key to ringing is having a really solid uh, arced circular motion with your bells. Notice that's what I did. And then every time that you're supposed to damp, they damp on your shoulders. Um, and this, uh, the, that, that's just the normal way of dampening. So that's the regular ring. Here's an LV. Let's say that uh, LV is written, written this let vibrate. So you hear the difference between those, real connected and they just ring forever. Usually this is when all of the notes uh, over a, the course of a measure or the course of a, of a phrase are all in the same chord. Uh, usually they'll have you damp after the chord changes. Let's hear the ring touch. This is going to be the shortest of the three. And that last one didn't vibrate. There we go. Hey, that's okay. So it's really short. Staccatos, you know, usually in other instruments you'd see that little dot over it. it. just means short. You're supposed to ring it and touch. And some people like to do that. So they go. Those are like quarter note uh, ring touches. Okay, so those are the, sev the different ways. Those are the different ways to ring the handbells. So now that we got those out of the way. Oh, let's get this thing back up here. Um, let's talk about the different ways of dampening. So we talked about the fact that dampening happens, but there are several different ways to accomplish that dampening, to, uh, to articulate notes, if you will. And so those are the different ways of actually sounding the notes. So dampening is how you stop the sound. This is how you start. Um, uh, dampening is how you stop. So the normal damp, uh, it looks kind of like uh, a, a bullseye target looking thing. Uh, and this is the damp symbol. Um, usually you don't see this by itself. What you usually see is, let's, let's take for instance, there's a, there's a quarter note and a, a half note, okay? So what you'll see is the quarter note is, let's say, an LV and then this uh, let vibrate, you know, you're going to vibrate all the way through uh, until 
here, let's call it a, we'll call it three, four, and here's your measure, right? Uh, and so here are your three notes. You'll see LV, and so these are all vibrating through un, uh, until the downbeat of this next measure, um, which will look like this. And then maybe that's the end of a section or something like that. So you see how these two are going to be really legato, and then uh, it'll, this is just rhythmic, so obviously these might be different notes, but this is how the, art, the articulation goes. It's going to be smooth connected until it asks for you to damp, and that's usually where you see this damp symbol. Um, another normal way of, of dampening, um, well, fairly common, uh, is the, uh, sorry, this little symbol, which is, uh, stands for table damp. So when you see this, it essentially just means that instead of dampening on your, on your shoulder, on your chest, like you usually would, you're going to use the table to stop the sound. And so this, this creates a completely different oral uh, uh, sound type because the sound is being transferred into this. Uh, it, just, it just sounds different. Let's, let's listen to the two differences here. See if you can't hear them. Get these out of the way. Here we go. So the first one I'm going to do just regular damp. So, and here's table damps. These are half notes. Uh, and so the sound is a little different. You see how it rings a little bit more when when it, when it's a table damp rather than when it's just regular damp. Um, and so sometimes composers want to get a different sound out of the way that they're, that they're stopping notes. They're, they're stopping the, the lines or the phrases or whatever. Um, and sometimes they combine this at the end of the song, so you get one of those. Um, and, that's, and we'll talk about that, that a little bit later, but it's, it's similar to articulations, except for it's, how, it's concerned with how do you stop the sound. Another fairly common practice as far as dampening is concerned, sorry I dropped my pen, another fairly common practice as far as dampening is concerned is, uh, is what's called the TD, the, and it's not this, it's not a table damp, it is a thumb damp. Whereas the table damp uh, is concerned with stopping the sound, uh, the thumb damp the TD is really more concerned with articulation. How are you going to play the note? And so we're really kind of, it's, even though they, they, it says damp, um, it's really more of an articulation marking um, and less about, about how, how to stop the sound. So here's, here's how this thumb damp sounds. So I've got my hand bells in my hand and I'm taking my thumb, let's see if, you, if I can get a little closer here. I'm going to take my thumb and I am going to press it into the casting of the bell. Now what this is going to do is it's going to change the sound a little bit. You notice how I do this? And I would suggest uh, making sure that you're wearing gloves usually. I'm not, but I'm going to clean these bells right after this. But for some ensembles, you don't clean your bells every rehearsal. And, uh, and also the oils in your fingers can really, really wreak havoc on on these on these handbells, the casting. So I would suggest wearing um, gloves uh, or moleskin or something to cover your to protect the bells from your hands, the oils in your hands, if you're going to be doing this. But for the purposes of this uh, this tutorial, uh, I'm 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 not wearing gloves. Um, I couldn't find mine. Oops. <laughs> so here we go, and I'm going to make sure to clean mine right after this. So I'm taking my thumb, I'm lightly pressing it into the casting and I'm going to play. Listen to a regular ring. And I'm letting these vibrate. Now listen to the difference here. I'm just doing this one silly thing. Do you hear the difference? There's a little bit of uh, a muted sound to it, um, and it's, it's obviously for effect. 
And the harder that you press, the higher that you put your thumb, the more muted the sound becomes because of the nature of the instrument. The handbell really resonates uh, further up the bell than, than uh, further up a top. And so if you were to, let's say, take your hand and press it at the top, it would be even more muted because that's closer, also closer to where the mallet is striking the bell, at least on these. So uh, all of those things uh, combined mean, make for this, um, this, this technique makes it a more muted sound. And you can also hear the overtones a little better on these bells when you do that, I think. Another fairly common type of articulation uh, is the use of mallets. Now, the mallet marking for, for notes looks like this. It looks like a plus sign, and it's got a little staccato-looking dot over it. And so this, this specifically uh, means to table mallet. Um, so uh, the plus sign you know, is, is the sign for, for mallet. The dot is usually connected with it to, to say that um, unless you're on a tree, so it by itself usually indicates that you've got to put bells on a little tree, uh, on a bell tree, and then you hit them with the mallets on the tree. Well, when you've got this little dot under it, it means that you set them down on the table, uh, and the table becomes your tree. Uh, it creates a, um, a, another interesting, different sound that composers like to use. Um, and uh, so this is table. Uh, uh, mallet. Great. So when you when you use mallets on the bells on the table, uh, it creates another type of articulation that you can use and that composers like to use for handbells very often. All right, let's take a listen. I've got in my hands two yarn mallets. They're pretty medium as far as, uh, as, far as hardness is concerned. Um, and I really usually don't like to use uh, what's, uh, what's called either, either rubber or um, those, those really hard, firm mallets that are wooden. Um, I just don't like those. I, uh, I always am afraid they're going to hurt the bells. And, uh, and uh, I get that these can tear up quicker uh, because they're yarn and they're not quite as firm. They do have a, a firm center, but they, uh, the, the yarn kind of protects both the handbell and the actual um, inner core of the mallet. And so I think everybody wins, although it does produce a more muted sound uh, than with a harder uh, mallet would, potentially. So let's, let's listen to it. Uh, here is the regular ring to let vibrate, and here is thumb damp. And I didn't, I didn't do my circular motion there, and I'm sorry for that. Um, but here is uh, a table, table mallet. Here we go. Great. So you can see the difference between those, those different ways of articulating a note. Um, they really produce different, completely different sounds. This is more of a, a completely damped, and you get a really strong, as soon as it hits, sound out of it. And you get a lot of overtone. At least for, for my ear, I hear a lot of o overtone. Uh, the key, in my opinion, is to hit the handbell as close to the, to, to the rim as possible, the rim of the bell, um, just to get maximum sound out of it. That's my personal preference. Uh, other, other directors probably teach different things, but that's, what, that's, that's my preference as far as getting the most sound out of a, a, a table mallet like this. I don't know if you can see this red very well, so we're going to switch to green here. So we've talked about the different types of dampening, um, and we, we use that, that uh, thumb damp as a transition toward articulations. And then we heard the difference between that damped muted sound um, and of the, of, the, of the thumb damp and the muted sound of the table mallet. 
Now let's, let's uh, there's one other fairly common um, muted uh, articulation type, and that is the martellato, and it looks like this. It's always filled in like that, so uh, I was tempted just to draw an open triangle, but here we are. The martellato is, uh, is a controlled punching of the handbell, and I, notice I said controlled punching, uh, controlled punching of the handbell into the foam of the table. Um, and so, here I'm going to spell this martellato for you, I want to make sure I've got it right here. Okay, here we go. This, uh, this type of articulation is simply another way of kind of dampening the sound. And what happens is you just kind of, you, you punch it into the foam, controlled, uh, and using that. So you get a, um, uh, a similar sound to the table damp. Uh, except for it's the entire sound. You get, it's, it's a little bit different because uh, it's more of a staccato, but you get the same aural um, uh, effect that you did with, with the table damp, except for this is the whole thing. And uh, you're not just stopping the sound, you're actually creating and stopping the sound with the martellato. The other thing you see a lot of uh, right along these lines is what's called the, the uh, martellato lift, or what's also called mart lift for short. Uh, and I'm being very careful to color in those lines here. Uh, so, mart lift. And uh, this simply, and I think the arrow goes after, uh, this symbol uh, just simply means you're gonna, you're gonna controlled, you're gonna control your punch of the handbell into the phone and then you're going to immediately lift it off the table. You almost get kind of an echo effect. It's pretty interesting. So these are the two different markings you usually see uh, related to martellato, which is a controlled punching of the handbell into the foam. Let's take a listen to these two types of articulation. Gotta get my, my uh, mallets out of here. Here we go. So, uh, so far we've heard regular ringing. and listen to the martellato. Notice my preference for this is, is to actually go kind of into the foam. So I actually am lightly punching the foam. And I'm not putting force behind it. I'm mostly just allowing my uh, and see, I, I didn't control that punch uh, because it, it gave a rebound. But what I'm, uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking my arm, lifting it up to about shoulder height, and I'm letting the force of gravity take it to the, to the foam. I hear that uh, some directors uh, like to uh, go at an angle. They like to kind of dig, almost like a shovel at an angle. They like to shovel into the foam. But that's really... Um, the, the, in my opinion, the, the potential problem with that is that you get some of those overtone ringing sounds that you don't get when you just allow gravity to do work. Um, so did you hear the difference between those two? One was a little bit of a shovel and one was almost just dropping. So I'll do that again. You hear it? Maybe, maybe you can't. I, I don't know. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. But at any rate, that to my ear, um, I really prefer just allowing the bell to hit the foam. Um, I'm controlling the descent into the foam, and I'm not adding any extra pressure unless it's a really loud section. Let's say it's at three Fs. It's a, at, you know, a, a fortissimo or something like that. You've got three Fs in front of you. It's uh, the loudest part in the, in the song, and for some reason the composer decided, yeah, let's table, uh, let's, let's, let's use the table uh, for effect here, and let's do some martellato. 
Yeah, okay. Uh, the other type of martellato that you that you hear is that is that mart lift. And let's hear let's hear the difference here. So these are regular martellatos. Let's hear the mart lift. Do you hear that? So the difference is there's uh, it's a little bit damped and then you hear the ringing continues after. Hear it with the, with the F4. So in my opinion, the best way to do it is exactly like you're doing the martellato, but you don't linger and you immediately bounce off. It's almost as if this is made of rubber and not metal and not brass. So you get the, you get a little bit of a damp there and it really takes out the overtones. Listen to it as compared to uh, the the uh, the uh, table mallet. So there is an there is a definite change in the way that those two articulations sound, and I think you'll be able to hear that on this recording. And also notice that there's a difference between table damp and the martellato or the mark lift. So this is the way that you stop sound and this is the way that you that that you articulate the sound. Totally different. So you'll notice that the mark lift has a little arrow next to it. Uh, there are this isn't the only kind of articulation marking that is so visual like this. Take for instance the and let's let's see if I can't get my expo marker. Um, the swing, which looks like this. And it is just like it sounds. You're supposed to swing your bell after articulating it down and then up as it says here. So let's say you have a whole note. It's, you're in 4-4, four, four, it's four counts. So you've got articulation, you've got Swing, swing. And let's say these are over beats three and four. Swing, swing. Bing. Uh, this is what it's going to sound like, this pattern right here. So I can't make a bar here. Here's what this is going to sound like. So notice half note, and then over three, four, you've got the swing written. Here's what it sounds like, and this is A4. One, two, swing, swing. Two, swing, swing. And so you hold for two and then you swing on three, down on three, just like the picture said, and then back up on four to re-articulate with either the same note or a different note, whatever the case is. So you damp and then you go again unless it tells you otherwise. But that's kind of how the swing works. Those are what those arrows are. The other two kind of um, image-driven, articulation-looking markings, uh, I probably said that weirdly, but I think you get the idea, are the, uh, the shake, sometimes you see it SK, um, or which, uh, and it sometimes it has an arrow at the end, uh -oh, whoa, to, to indicate that you continue to shake until something changes, and it's usually written over a note, um, or uh, and you also see this, uh, looks like this. Uh, and this, so this is shake, and this uh, is called, what, what I call brush, but what most people call echo. So um, either one, they're used interchangeably a lot in handbell circles, um, but technically it's called echo. In my group, we like to call it brush. So uh, these two markings you'll see um, usually over long notes, held notes. So you'll see this, uh, this is a whole note, and you'll see the shake until this quarter note in the next measure, right? Near 4-4. Four, four. So, uh, and the same is true for this, uh, for the brush echo. Let's say you're in 4-4, four, four, you've got... Uh, You've got two half notes in a measure, 
and you've got these markings here. Two brushes. Well, this indicates that you're supposed to play, brush, play, brush. Does that make sense? So let's hear these two articulations. So here's the shake first. Let's say you've got an A shake. And it's just like what you think. Maybe it's two notes at the same time. And you just shake them uh, until you've got to re-articulate. So let's say you've got a whole note and then a quarter note. And you just re-articulate when the quarter note comes up and you're good to go. So that's the shake. That's why it's a little squiggly line. It, it makes you freak out and that's what you do with your hands. You just shake them. So the other one that we talked about was the brush echo. And so here's kind of what it sounds like. Let's say you've got uh, those two half notes uh, in a measure. And let's say the first one is an A, the second one is a F. So some people like to brush the same way. I like to brush inside for both hands. It's just more natural for me. So when I brush the A, Notice the A goes inside, the F goes inside, but they are actually going the opposite direction as far as clockwise, counterclockwise is concerned. So this one is going counterclockwise, and this one is going clockwise. Yeah, that's right. So uh, you ring, brush, ring, brush, and it's that simple. Sometimes you've got several brushes in a row if you've got like a whole note or something or a, a dotted quarter ring. Uh, so dotted quarter, ring, brush, brush, ring, brush, brush. And the key to the brush is just to hit the tip of that, um, that bell rim. You're good to go. Here's all the stuff we've get, been through. We've been through the different ways of ringing the handbells. So the regular ring. Connected, but not like let vibrate, LV. Or ring touch. Right? So, normal, long, short. So those are the different ways of, of, of ringing the bells. Here's the different ways of dampening the bells, stopping the sound. There is the damp and the table damp they create a different sound to the two of those do. And then there are the ways of, um, of articulating the notes. So there is the thumb damp. We put our thumb very lightly. And notice how the ringing is the same. And, um, and they have, so the difference here is that it has a, um, it's, it's a, normal ring um, and uh, normal damp. So we're not... That's why it's an articulation, it, uh, even though it's called a damp, is because the actual dampening, the stopping of the sound, doesn't happen until you use uh, your body or the table to dampen the sound. Then there is what we called um, table malleting. Just like it sounds. And then there is martellato and mart lift. So uh, using the table. Uh, here we go. And the mart lift. Controlled punching, or what I like is just letting gravity do, do the work for you. And then there are these uh, other special techniques, these other articulation, like the shake. Yeah, you just go crazy. And then there is the swing. Yeah, that was fun. So those are the, some of the articulations, the, the special kind of musical notations that you're going to run into as far as when you go to play handbells.
and some of them are way different than the things that you see in other types of music, piano or voice or, um, or other instruments, guitar or what have you. Uh, and so I hope that this was uh, informational, that this was useful to you, uh, and that maybe you gained some, some courage to jump in and try the handbells. Okay, worshipers, uh, I hope you've enjoyed yourself. If you have, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to this channel for more content about music, ministry, and how to grow in both. This is Jared, signing off. Go in peace. So we went over uh, regular ringing. We went to, uh, we, uh, sorry. So we went over regular ringing. Oh, shoot. So we went over regular ringing. <sighs> this one's not speaking. I don't know, that's weird. Okay, and these are the, some of them are the most common. You also see swing. And you see, um, you see uh, brushes. Also known as echo. Um, but, and those are probably the other two primary. I should have talked about those. Let's go ahead and talk about those now.